You should all have one of these, and you should all have one of these. Okay, the blue form is if you would like a copy of the presentation that you see on the screen. Um, if you would like one, please complete it, put your email address on it, and we will email it to you on Thursday or Friday of this week. Please make sure that your email address is really clear, because often we try and send things to you and we can't quite fathom out the email address, and then it looks as though we haven't sent it and we, and we have tried desperately to do so. So if you would like to have a copy of the presentation or to go on our database, please complete this form and either give it to myself at the end or my colleague at the back. So welcome. Um, my name's Jill Morris. Um, I'm a chartered marketer, um, member of the Chartered Institute of Marketing, fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. I am a beauty therapist by background. Um, I've worked in other salons. I've had two salons of my own. I've worked in research and development. Um, I've written a couple of textbooks. I'm a founding director of Habia. And if I went on, the whole lecture time would be gone and you'd have lost the will to live. But suffice to say, I am one of you. Okay, uh, but I'm also a businesswoman, and what I hope to do in the next 45 minutes is share with you um, a little bit of knowledge about marketing. Now, we obviously do full-length training courses, so what this will be is a, is a whistle-stop tour about marketing. Okay, so off we go. So first of all, what is marketing? Um, Lots of people think marketing is about putting a website together or putting an advert in a newspaper, but it is actually a management process designed to identify and satisfy customer needs and then that very important word at the end, profitably. Any idiot can give it away. Okay? So, these are the key issues to do with marketing. First of all, identifying your clients. And I'm going to be going through all of this in, in a lot more detail. Identifying your clients, who you want them to be, etc. What is it that they want? And those of you that came in on my sales lecture yesterday, we did cover this um, a little bit. But who are the customers that you want? What is it that they need? Satisfying those needs. And again, key point, making money. Does anybody here feel awkward about making money? Anybody here have an allergy to making money? Anybody here a complimentary therapist who thinks making money is somehow unethical? Good, I've got the right audience. So, everything that impacts upon your customers is to do with marketing. So marketing is very, very important. So let's look at that first one, identifying your customers. I don't want you to shout anything out, but I'm going to ask you rhetorical questions that I want you to be thinking about, but I'm not going to ask anyone any questions or point the finger, okay? So when you get back, a bit of homework, you need to make a list of who your present customers are. And I suggest you put them into groups of highly profitable, averagely profitable, and the blue rinse brigade that come in for a manicure on pension day and it ends up costing you money because you give them a silly discount. Is this ringing bells? Highly, yes, lots of nodding. Highly profitable, averagely profitable, and not very profitable. Who are your customers? Within that, we're talking gender, we're talking treatment type, etc. So let's, let's, you need to be clear about who your present customers are. Because before you can do anything in business planning, you need to understand where you are now. Understanding where you are now is like building a house and digging down deep into the ground and building really, really firm foundations. If you think you know where you are without really planning for it and analyzing it, your foundations are going to be a bit rocky. Okay, so who are your present customers and who would you like them to be? Well, remember you've got your three piles. Highly profitable, averagely profitable, least profitable. So what you want, one would hope, is more of these ones. You don't want more of these ones. So you want more of the highly profitable ones. Just as an aside, how do you know how profitable your clients are if you don't know what all your costs are? How much it costs you to be in business per hour? 
what each treatment costs you to deliver. So you need to know your financials. And I know a lot of us therapists aren't terribly good at financials, but your product suppliers should be able to give you an indication of cost per treatment. So you will have your fixed costs, which is how much it costs you to be in business, whether you have clients or not, and then your variable costs, depending upon the treatments that you deliver. So, profitable clients, who do you want more of? Who this time next year do you want as your client base? And it doesn't matter whether you're a salon, whether you're a supplier, whether you're an exhibition organizer, these rules apply. Work out who's most profitable to you, find out more about them, and they're the ones that you want more of. So these ones that you want more of, where are they? You've all heard of the phrase, birds of a feather flock together, yeah? Let, let's say as an example, you decided you wanted more clients like me. Again, as I said yesterday, a woman of a certain age, obviously in her prime, <coughs> with, a, with a bit of time and a bit of money to spend. Okay, so where do I live? Because the chances are that people who live in the same postcode as myself will be similar to me. Similar socio-demographic groups, similar amount of earnings. So who do you want more of and then find out more about them? So if you want more people like me, where do I live? Where do I work? Because it may be that I'm with like-minded people at work. Perhaps when you've found that out, you can make contact with the head of human resources and offer your salon as an incentive to their employees that do really, really well. And you give them 10% off or something like that. So where do I live? Where do I work? Where do I socialize? Because the chances are where I go out to dine, where I go out to drink, obviously you can tell by my beautiful complexion I am completely teetotal. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. So where do I socialize? Where do I meet people? Because the chances are other people like me will be there. So this is when putting um, even business cards in the, in the ladies' toilets. Having some sort of um, arrangement with um, the manager of um, a bar that I frequent or a restaurant that I frequent. Other people like me will go to that bar or that restaurant. And we'll talk a little bit later about doing joint promotions with other business managers, other business owners who share the same type of clientele. Because if you get your marketing right, other than time, it shouldn't cost you that much. We'll come on to that more in a moment. So where do, where do I live? Where do I work? Where do I socialize? Where do I relax? Do I go to a gym? Do I go to a health club? So you're finding out more about the clients you want more of. Where do I shop? So if I use a particular caterer, if I use a particular florist, if I use a particular shoe shop, dress shop, um, hat shop, milliners, that's right, I knew there was a proper word for it. The chances are other people like me will be going there as well. So when you have decided who you want more of, you are then analyzing those people to see where the commonality is, or if indeed there is any commonality, and trust me, there will be. What do I read? You might be thinking about putting an advert in a newspaper. Now, if the people that you want more of, i.e. me, don't read the local papers, what's the point? How many of you have put an advert in the local paper and you've got absolutely diddly squat from it? We all have. But we all tend to think that is the way forward. We put an ad in the newspaper. But by its very nature, an advert is generic. You're trying to appeal to everybody. So in actual fact, you end up appealing to no one. So I actually don't like newspaper advertising. I don't think it works. But nevertheless, if, if enough of people that you want more of, i.e. me, do read a certain newspaper, then it might be worth considering. Please don't fall into the trap that a lot of people do of thinking, oh, I'll advertise in the free newspaper because everybody gets it. 
Yes, everybody gets it, but does everybody read it? I don't, I'll make up the fire with it.